Hi, I'm Dr. Satish Kumar and this is Kaizen Dental. Our aim here is to help dentists succeed. In today's interview, we have with us Dr. Akruti Choksi. She did her BDS from D.Y. Patil Dental College, Mumbai. She then went to New Zealand and became an equine dental technician. She is currently working at all major race courses in India and Sri Lanka. She also consults for prestigious stud farms and polo teams all over India. Other than this, she is involved with a lot of NGOs related to animal welfare. She is a telepathic animal communicator and a practitioner of conscious horse, conscious rider. Hi, Dr. Akruti. Nice to see Hello. you. Very nice to meet you too. Uh, when I made my list of the first few people I want to interview, you were among the top of them. The reason is you're doing something very unique. Okay, in my last 11 years of practicing dentistry, I had not heard this till I started following you on Instagram. Okay, so I want to start by asking how your journey has been from your BDS and DY part to getting into equine dentistry. So I must say it's been a very fun journey. Um, I actually uh, have always worked with animals even when I was a BDS student. So oh. in dental school, I did a lot of uh, animal rights activism and I did a lot of rescues and, and all of that uh, with, you know, small animals, horses, um, those tangawali, tangawala ponies and stuff. So I used to do all that kind of work around Bombay. And obviously I have been riding horses since uh, I was a kid. And, uh, you know, my father is the one that kind of instilled this passion for animals in my life. And I think I'm very grateful for him for that. And um, so I was doing BDS and I thought I would become a pediatric dentist or like, a, oh. you know, I, I think that was my only option of BDS or, you know, MDS in pediatrics. Uh, but then kind of um, through my own spiritual journey of practicing Namyaho Rengikyo and Buddhism, I was able to understand that I have to do something that makes me really happy and really fulfilled. And I, I should love my Monday mornings. It shouldn't be like, oh God, I have to go to clinic again and repeat the cycle. So yes, it was, it's was. it been a wonderful journey so far. I do enjoy my Monday mornings or even Sunday workings or whatever it may be. So you work on Sundays also? With horses, you never know. Sometimes you have a whole week off and then you have to work like a maniac on the weekend. So... It just depends. <laughs> okay. Uh, so where did you do your studies related to equine dentistry? So after my BDS, I finished two years of working in clinics. I worked as a locum. I, I worked in, you know, slum clinics and trusts. And uh, I worked for a little while in a Bollywood clinic as well. Um, after two years of working is when I realized that I need to kind of do something that makes me really happy now and, you know, really move on with this this whole mission of my life. Um, so then I kind of researched a lot of courses abroad and uh, I found this course in New Zealand uh, for equine dental uh, technicians. So I went and opted for that. And at that time, that was the longest course in the, the, the world, actually. Oh. Um, so I opted for that and then trained there. But uh, you told me you liked all animals. You work with like small animals, horses and everything. Then why do yeah. you select horses? So equine teeth are very different. Um, usually small mammals, small animals have teeth like us, uh, you know, that kind of erupt and then they stay at a certain place where our teeth, you know, they don't keep erupting throughout our lives. But horses like uh, rabbits or mice have, you know, constantly erupting teeth. So if, if I don't know if you know, but like uh, rabbits or mice have to constantly eat something because their teeth get too big. So um, horse teeth are kind of like that, obviously not at the same rate of growth, but they grow to a mem per year. So um, they have, uh, you know, constantly erupting teeth called hypsodont teeth. Um, so dentistry for them is quite different. It's not normal, the root canals, extraction, scalings and all of that. It's quite different in terms of balancing, shaping. So that's why that kind of intrigued me a lot. And I love horses. So, I mean, I just said, let me try this out. Okay. So what is the basic difference between a vet and an equine dentist? So vet is obviously, uh, you know, uh, you know, it's a degree course in uh, veterinary sciences, which is, you know, they are taught all of the above and everything. It's like something like MBBS and BDS, right? Like, I mean, there's obviously uh, equine dentistry right now is not full-fledged course in most parts of the uh, the world. Uh, 
uh, the world but um, it's i think very soon it will get there uh, people will uh, understand that equine dentistry needs to be made a separate course and separate degree itself because um, it's quite important and uh, horses exam for example horses are extremely expensive animals uh, they are athletes they have a lot of money on them so uh, you know their care and their their um, comfort is of utmost importance because otherwise they're not winning you any money or they're not really performing in their races so how was your experience in new zealand where you went and did this course matlab how did you <laughs> find the learning out there it was obviously very very um, you could say different because I, there are obviously no ghoda walas holding a horse and and you know you are at this comfort of other people doing everything everything has to be done with from by you by scratch uh, from scratch everything has to be done by you by scratch and then you have to um, you know you have to literally go there and like find the horse in the paddock uh, put a like a halter on it and a leash on it and bring it where you need to do dental work and you know you need to make sure that you know um, you need to be friends with the horse because then you know you need to get the dental work done because if the horse decides he doesn't want to do it then you are in trouble because you don't have a vet around to sedate it and all of that so it's a uh, it's very difficult and different you can say it's not like you know a patient's come on my dental chair and i can tell him that okay i'm going to give you a local anesthesia right now and everything is going to be sorted and you're not going to feel a thing um yeah so it's it's very different but it's a lot of fun which is more easier treating patients that's human beings or treating horses who are more easy to manage <laughs> for me definitely the horses i mean i would choose horses over people any day uh so are they very easy compli- compliant do they listen to you how do you tend to connect with them basically so i think uh, this is something that you know warwick my uh, my teacher my coach uh, he kind of uh, taught me very well it was a good thing that i i didn't have too much of a background with horses and i was not like really i mean compared to abroad i mean we technically don't have much uh, you know know how in horses but uh, it was good because he could teach me from scratch and he could really tell me like the right ways to understand their psychology to understand their mindset to make friends with them first and win their trust i i think today i tell people that i'm kind of technically practicing pediatric dentistry with horses also oh, your first so you, plan yeah you really need to win their trust over otherwise uh, you're going to have a very hard time uh, doing dental work so you have to be gentle you have to be quiet you have to understand their intrinsic nature they are you know they are um, prey animals so they they will hide things they will not show things they they are designed to be quiet and discreet so you know any hard rough um, loud movements in front of them will scare them and they will try to run away from you or think you are the enemy so all those things if you kind of be gentle and kind to them they will gladly oblige they're more than happy to be happy uh, to you know get dental work done but how do they understand you as in how do you communicate with them so uh, yes a lot of it is learning horse behavior and learning uh, you know their uh, you know their i think first would be like genuinely learning horse behavior and um, you know their uh, you know their their psyche i guess uh, understanding what are their um, you know what traits make them feel uh, you know threatened so you obviously don't want to do that uh, later on i did go into learning you know uh, you know telepathic animal communication which is a little different oh. so uh, that that's that's a little uh, off the side maybe we'll come to it later but i can tell you in detail about that but i think mostly that mostly learning to understand that they are prey animals they you need to be very soft and gentle with them um, and they will comply they will really do their best to be very sweet i would really want to know about the telepathy side how do you communicate with them basically so telepathic animal communication is something i learned in india from manjri and uh, she is based out of pune now i think she does online classes and uh, courses as well uh, post covid but um, it was a really nice class to take because i understood that you know uh, we're all mammals we're all we're all animals at the end of the day um, you know when you think of someone and that someone calls you or when you uh, you know when you're thinking about something you see those things much more uh, you know frequently for example so uh, basically i'm talking to you over a phone so i'm using you know t- the telephone per se right to speak to you so it's a telephonic conversation um, but in terms of uh, you know telepathic animal communication telepathy means you know speaking through the mind 
So, um, you know, it's as simple as if you have a dog or a cat or like any pet at home, how do you know they're hungry? How do you know that they want to go for a walk? They will show you, they will, you know, they will communicate that with you uh, if they're feeling love or they're feeling anger, you know, any person can tell when a dog is growling at them that that dog is angry, right? It's, it's something that we intrinsically know. So, I mean, there's no uh, scientific way to probably um, explain how to do this because telepathy is something people believe is, you know, like paranormal or whatever, but it's very simple. I think we all do it. Uh, it's just the question of unlearning a lot of those self-doubts and self-fears that we have. And then the animal will tell you, hey, I don't like this. So I like this. I'm not okay with this or this is not happy. You know, I'm not happy doing this or, you know, so many a times when I'm doing dental work for them, I'll understand when the, the guy standing next to me, the groom is, you know, holding them too tight or is being too forceful. I can feel it. Like I, I'll tell him, don't, don't, don't touch the horse like that. He doesn't like it. Or, you know, don't pin it down. It doesn't like it. So it's, it's um, the more free you keep them, the more relaxed you keep them, the easier your job is. Oh, so have you tried it on other animals other than horses? The telepathy? Animal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I actually am also a an telepathic animal communicator. So I, I do oh, work with host animals and, uh, you know, rescue animals. And um, just generally people call me up and ask me what are the issues between the two cats that they have in the house or, you know, what is the hap what's, what's happening? Why did this dog run away or whatever? So yeah, there's tons of that happening. So uh, if anyone quite, wants, they can contact you for this? How is it? Yes, yes, it's a proper like it's a proper profession that a lot of us in India, uh, you know, practicing. A lot of vets have gotten into it. A lot of uh, you know, uh, like dog trainers. A lot of people actually do uh, telepathic animal communication. And uh, I would suggest every animal lover really do this because um, it will give you a very nice perspective in life about what is karma and what is life. And uh, they're very wise. They know exactly what's going on. We think we are the smartest species in this universe, but we are really not. Um, you know, you have to listen to them sometimes to, to figure how cool they are and what's going on in their mind. So they're very, very sorted in life. So you're used to being the pioneer, maybe in telepathy and in uh, the equine dentistry in India. So, so yes, equine, yes. Have you had in any inner... difficulties when you started something new? So well, equine like, you know, dentistry, Yes, uh, it was, uh, it was obviously not easy. It's a male dominated society and, uh, you know, industry and, um, you know, obviously the handlers of the horses from the handlers to the trainers to everybody would look at you and say, what are you going to do? I mean, you're just a lady and how can you, you know, deal with these big horses? Uh, obviously they've not seen the size of New Zealand horses. They were humongous. So, I mean, that was a different level of difficulty altogether because half the time you can't even reach the mouth because the horse is so tall. You put a stool in between. Yeah, literally, I've actually done, uh, you know, thoroughbred work where I'm standing on a stool and working on a horse, which was uh, a very dumb thing to do, but I still did it because I just couldn't reach his mouth. So uh, it was, he was that big. Um, so that, yes, that is there, but uh, it was quite difficult in terms of, you know, getting people to be convinced about this. A lot of like my ex bosses and, and people around me, they were like, you know, are you sure you want to do this? Like, you know, low clinic, you know, daat ka dawa khana nahi chalta pe and you're doing horse dentistry. Who's going to bring their horses to, uh, you know, get their teeth checked. But, um, you know, now after 12 years, a lot of people know about it. A lot of people understand the importance of it. And, uh, it's really kind of caught on now. And, and people are more and more understanding. Yes, there could be a lot more, uh, you know, education and awareness happening, but I'm trying my best. Uh, so how did you go about educating these people in India about equine dentistry? How did you explain everyone what it is and how is it important? So at first, like I told you in the race courses, when they're athletes, that's very, very important for the bit and the jockey and, you know, for the horse to be comfortable. Uh, also, I mean, I took part in a lot of other, you know, uh, horse shows and, and, you know, went on to like literally one, one individual, you know, did free horses, you know, teeth for them to show them what's the difference. I've traveled actually to the, the remotest parts of the country, I think in like the smallest villages of Rajasthan to Gujarat to Punjab to actually show, you know, maybe work with government veterinarians or work with NGOs in different uh, areas all over the country to, um, you know, work with different uh, NGOs that work specifically with uh, working equines. So there are NGOs that work for that as well. So really going to all these little places and really showing them that something like this is possible as well. And this is such a big part of their health and care. You know, I mean, it's, it's as simple as it's basic. It's a basic requirement for a horse's uh, well-being. 
you know so it's like if i have a dog i have to take it to the vet and i have to you know walk the dog otherwise i might as well not have a dog you know i mean there's no point in me just making him sit like a vegetable at home so it's the same thing with a horse if you have that horse and you have to have that responsibility and understanding of what it entails to have a horse as a pet so i think that was like it was hard work it was a lot of travel and a lot of uh, uh, tough days and you know really like uh, intense days but it was it is fun it is still fun i still do it all the time and it's fun because i really love what i do you know so it's it's that way so it was easier in new zealand basically because there i think everyone would be having their own horses and everything yeah so in new zealand i mean people are uh, absolutely like you know every middle class person has a whole bunch of horses and you know they they are used to farm life mostly all middle class people are used to farm life they have their cattle they have their goat they have their sheep they have their horses um, you know that's a part of their day to day lifestyle so obviously we are very urbanized in in, in bombay it, i mean we have no uh, you know exposure to animals very very little exposure maximum a dog or a cat in our own house or a goldfish or something um so but their their lifestyle is very diff- different and uh, dentistry for horses is extremely important over there because um if you want to buy and sell your horses or if you want to set up your horses for any sort of competition or anything all the records like your veterinary records your dental records your farrery records everything has to be maintained so that anyone can even work with your horse so it's a very oh. systematic approach. so before we end you took a very different path after bds so what is your advice for the young dentists who are completely confused what to do so i would just say honestly uh, work the the way that's inside out rather than outside in because i tried that i i tried everyone telling me you know um bds ke baad to kuch nahi hota and you know you have to do something like mds and all because you know bds has no value or um, you know like there are so many dentists now and it's just the market is oversaturated you know i've heard all of this i've heard all of you know the above and more more i guess uh, but i think at the end of the day if you find something that is really really uh, something that your heart desires and you really want to do it then i think you should put everything on it and you should go by your gut and and do what you want to do because at the end of the day i think that's what helped me you know that today i mean there is a passion that's why i do what i do there were days where i was not making money at all there were days where i would come home and people would just be laughing at me and saying you you know you're crazy why are you even doing this uh, why don't you just open a small clinic and go back to human dentistry or small animal dentistry uh, you know equine dentistry ka sapna chhod do this is not going to work but uh, i think because of having a so strong spiritual practice and because of having you know supportive parents and and you know friends and you know positive uh, influences around me i was able to not give up at those crucial times where i just thought like nothing is working you know i've wasted my time and i've wasted that effort um that kind of changed you know i said no you know i want to do this it's going to happen so uh, there are times where you don't get paid there are times where you have very tough days there are times where you really frustrated uh, you know with people around or with situations around but i think that constant grit to keep going is your own spiritual and mental strength so the dentists need to work on that side knowing what they like basically and yes. improving their mental strength exactly so you know movies like um, three idiots or movies like those kind of movies i think they're very important for us to watch and for anyone to watch because it's it's genuinely true you know you can chase what the world is doing or you can you know you can you can go the harder way and do something different that you like to do and if you like to do it then anything is possible because you're going to make it possible you know so i think that so i know a lot of people ask me oh you know what's the scope and how much money can one make and i'm just like you know that's a completely wrong way to approach this because if i went by that i would kind of stop doing equine dentistry in one month of you know coming back to india that's the most so, common question we get the scope yeah. yeah the scope i i think we're just designed and trained like that indian kids are just uh, trained and designed like that by our system and society mm-hmm. but i think when we go outside the box is when we achieve something different Oh, that's a very valuable advice i really hope the listeners take it because i think it will make a difference in their life if they actually follow what they desire and they have the patience to see it through basically yeah. uh it was really nice having you on a show dr akruti i thank, thank you for your valuable time thank you so much thank you
Thank it was you. a great honor to be here. It's an honor for us to giving us your time. Thank you.